Well, good afternoon. When you think about your time at Stanford, what are the places that come to mind? Maybe the quad on a sunny day? Maybe the dish on a morning run? Huh? How about a classroom maybe where you had a particularly your favorite class, an inspiring instructor? What about Stanford Stadium for a last minute victory? How about the racetrack? <laughs> Not getting much resonance here. <laughs> well, maybe that wasn't a part of your time at Stanford, but for many of our current students, a day at the racetrack is every bit as much an important place as these others as part of their Stanford experience. Why would we go to the racetrack? Well, for almost as long as we've had cars, the racetrack has been the place to take them, to push them to the limits, to find out what works and what doesn't work. Many of the things in the car that you drove here today had their origins in the racetrack, originally designed to get somebody to go faster. They're now basic transportation. And the racetrack has also forged people, pushing them to their limits, challenging them with unforeseen situations that require tremendous creativity, calm, and teamwork. It's not surprising that people who've started their careers out on the racetrack have gone on to make phenomenal contributions to the rest of society. Now we stand really at the threshold of a new era of transportation. Cars that can use technology to assist their drivers with avoiding accidents or ultimately even drive themselves. With these sorts of technologies, the vast majority of the nearly 30,000 fatalities that occur on our roads each year simply need not happen. And we think the racetrack is, again, the perfect place to go to explore and develop these technologies. OK, that may not be exactly obvious. What does going out racing have to do with safety? But it actually makes a lot of sense. I'd like to ask you to reach out your palm and take a look at it. If you look at your extended hand and fingers, that's about the size of the contact patch between the tire and the road. The forces going on in those four little patches are what are going to determine if your car can brake in time to avoid an accident, if you can swerve into the next lane, or if your car is going to go into a spin. Race car drivers are experts at utilizing the forces in these four little patches to go fast, and we want to learn from them in order to be safe. So thanks to the sponsorship of Miles Collier and the REVS program at Stanford, we've had the opportunity to take our students to the track to work with some phenomenal drivers and with Miles' amazing collection of vintage race cars. So our students have been able to go to the track and add equipment to these cars that looks like it would be found more likely on a modern Formula One car than in a vintage race car. They've added accelerometers and gyroscopes to see how the vehicle can move. They've come up with clever ways of mounting sensors to figure out what pedals the driver is pushing on. As you can imagine, while we can use the cars, we can't drill a whole lot of holes in them. So they've had to be pretty creative with this. We set up cameras so that we can see things from the driver's perspective as they go around the track. And then set up on the top of the hill a differential GPS station that allows us to figure out where the car is on the track with an accuracy of about one to two centimeters. Once all of that is in place, some of the best drivers in the world take the car around the track and generate data for us. What are we able to learn from this? Well, let me give you one example. This is turn two at Laguna Seca down in Monterey. The cars enter this down at the uh, lower part of the left, swing around the hairpin, and exit. I have here data from two drivers driving a 1963 Corvette Grand Sport. In blue is Bruce Canapa. Bruce is actually the president of the track and takes what's known as a double apex approach to this. You can see he touches the inside of the track in two places, uh, once on turn entry and once on turn exit. In contrast, in green is John Morton. John has a large uh, racing career. He was a class champion at Le Mans, among many other things. And he takes what's known as the late apex. If you notice, he stays to the outside of the turn and only comes to the inside at the very end. Now, we thought this was great. You have two phenomenal drivers with totally different strategies, and we're going to find out who's faster. Before we reveal that, why don't you take a look at what it looks like from inside the car. OK, first up, here's Bruce. He's braking. He goes into the corner. As you see, he turns very sharply, hits the inside, swings a little wider, hits the inside again, and he's off. That's his double apex trajectory. All right, next up is John. John's a little bit calmer, as you see. 
He steers in a little bit more gradually, hits the apex only at the end, and then accelerates out. All right, any thoughts on this? Who's going to be faster? How many of you think Bruce with the double apex is going to be faster around this track and around this lap? How many think John with the late apex? Ooh. Well, there's a clear winner among the audience. Let's see what the data says. So as we go to this, if you look at it, John Morton gets about a minute and 41 seconds on his lap around the track. Bruce Canepa, minute 40.995. But the big point is that the difference here is only four one hundredths of a second. This is unbelievable. You have two drivers out in the car, radically different strategies, and in fact, the difference is within stopwatch error. This was something we didn't expect at all. In fact, we were planning to spend a lot of time researching the single best way around the track, and what a waste of time that would have been. It turns out there's many fast ways around the track, and what's important is how you drive them. These are the sort of insights that we can get by going to the track. But our students are not only out on the track to celebrate these things and study this, they're there to learn in other ways as well. When I give talks like this, people often tell me, you have the best job in the world. And working with Stanford students in vintage race cars, yeah, that's pretty believable. But not every day goes well. And in fact, the day that we took this car out, a Porsche Abarth Carrera for the first time, was kind of a near disaster. Put yourself in the shoes of John Kegelman, my student who was responsible for this. He had spent two days trying to get the car wired up and convince the scrutineers that all these suction cupped antennas were actually safe enough to go out on the track. Then the car goes out on the track and surrounded by our project sponsor, John Morton, our driver, the other mechanics and the students. He opens up the laptop to pull off the data and finds he has absolutely nothing. It's a moment that demands a little bit of quiet reflection. But there's no quiet. There's a race going on 40 feet away. There's 600 horsepower engines firing up in either uh, side of the garage. And he's got to get the car back on the track for the afternoon section or the day is a total loss. What do you do? Well, put it in the battery. <laughs> oh, the battery was fine. Turns out that wasn't the problem. But what was the problem? Well, take it out, strategize, set priorities, figure out what needs to happen, make it happen, get out on the road. Did we fix the problem? You don't know until the car comes back and you find out that you have data. <laughs> on the track, as in life, it's often the things that don't work that teach us the most. But now our students are not content just to go out and watch. They're actually actively learning to become racers themselves. In fact, most of my graduate students have taken training classes, such as this one at Thunder Hill, and now have novice racing licenses from the Sports Car Club of America. We've taken on some undergraduates as well, such as Anna Olson there on the left. When she's not racing around the track, she's actually the mechanical team lead and driver for the Sanford Solar Car team. They turn all of Australia to their racetrack driving every two years from Darwin to Adelaide. This sort of training also gives empathy, gives an understanding that goes far beyond observing. Take the case of Joe Funk. Joe has, in fact, developed a lane change assistant. Remember that idea that it's not so much the path you choose, but how you drive it? He's actually put that into our cars. If you watch here, the car is racing down the track, sees the lane is blocked, and immediately, executes a lane change without the driver needing to do anything. If you see that from the inside, you'll see that this was actually a pretty dramatic maneuver, one most humans would have been hard pressed to pull off, but one that you would be very glad the car was able to make, particularly in the case that you were the obstacle. So by going out on the racetrack, we're finding new ways to build the cars, the algorithms, and the technology that we can lead, believe can lead to a safer future. At the same time, we're engaging, teaching the students all of these skills, and turning the racetrack into just another classroom at Stanford, albeit somewhat of a noisy one. Thank you. <laughs>